World Bank says it will provide no future funding for Uganda because of its anti-gay law. That legislation was passed by the parliament of Uganda. And now the World Bank are saying that that democratic steps are wrong and criminal. What a hypocrisy is this? Rwanda accepts the latest ruling on a former genocide suspect and financier, but is disappointed for victims and survivors. African broadcasters say radio still reigns supreme across the continent. Niger's military junta forms a transitional government in an apparent defiance of ECOWAS ultimatum. And the authorities say they will keep talking to the World Bank after the bank pledged to not release any new fundings to the Central African nation. The bank objects to a new anti-homosexuality law that critics describe as one of the harshest in the world. Halima Atumani reports from Kampala. Ugandan officials have expressed concern over pronouncements by the World Bank that it will give no new financing to Uganda. In a statement released Tuesday, the World Bank said Uganda's recently passed Anti-Homosexuality Act fundamentally contradicts the institution's values of inclusion and non-discrimination. The statement adds that the World Bank believes its vision to eradicate poverty can only succeed if it includes everyone, irrespective of race, gender, or sexuality. It said Uganda's law undermines those efforts. Jimmy Mugunga, spokesperson for Uganda's Ministry of Finance, Planning, and Economic Development, said Uganda has made concerted efforts to explain the intent and effect of the act to the World Bank and other institutions. The government believes in a continued engagement. And despite the statement, what I know is that the Ministry of Finance will to continue to engage the bank and any other parties so that the more clarity is brought to bear. So far, about 1.7 billion US dollars of the over 4 billion allocated to Uganda by the World Bank has been disbursed, raising concerns about whether the country will get the remaining amount. The funding is used to improve healthcare, agriculture, roads, energy, infrastructure, and education in Uganda. Mugunga says anything that takes away from development is worrisome. These are circumstances in which we find ourselves, and therefore we're proactively looking at methods of adaptability, but also ways of making sure that we mitigate the likely impact, if any. Economist Fred Mohumza says the impact will be widespread, considering the World Bank's size and terms that cannot be easily replaced by other funders. When World Bank gives you a loan and you put it in your central bank in dollars, you begin to convert it into local currency. Yeah, so that stabilizes the shilling because you have some sufficient dollars that people who need to import things can use. So if the World Bank loans don't come through, then we might see pressure on the exchange rate as well going upwards. The World Bank says it remains committed to helping Ugandans escape poverty, access vital services, and improve lives. Frank Mgisha, an LGBTQ activist, tells VOA he hopes the World Bank's pronouncement will help efforts to annul the Anti-Homosexuality Act. Mugisha is among nine petitioners who have filed a challenge to the act in Uganda's constitutional court. Halima Athmani for VA News, Kampala. Meanwhile, Uganda's Foreign Minister Okelo Oyem says the World Bank's decision to suspend loans to Uganda is undemocratic, unjust, hypocritical, and unfair. Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni, who signed the measure into law, said in a social media post on Wednesday that Uganda will develop with or without loans. Foreign Minister Oyem told VOA Swahili service reporter Kenins Odongo that Parliament passed the anti-LGBTQ law on behalf of the people of Uganda. First of all, the decision is unjust, very unfair and not called for, and very unfortunate. The decision not to continue extending loans to Uganda by World Bank is based on very wrong premises. The fact that it's based on the fact that we passed legislation on LGBTQs is wrong. That bill was passed on a democratic basis. A very democracy, the World Bank has been lecturing us, lecturing us year after year and pushing it down our throat. That legislation was passed by the Parliament of Uganda, for the people of Uganda, on behalf of the people of Uganda. And now the World Bank are saying that that democratic, democratic steps are wrong and criminal. What a hypocrisy is this? Hypocrisy of the biggest order. Their country 
including in the United States of America, the countries, the length and breadth of the world, the Middle East, the Far East, even uh, Israel, who have put into place legislation and rules against LGBTQ, restricting them, oppressing their activities, why is Uganda being singled out? In the United States of America, there are states, the length and breadth of the United States, who have passed lower laws and legislation, suppressing and restricting the freedom of LGBTQs. Why are they being uh, punished as well? So this is a very unfortunate, very unfair, and very unjust, and very unfortunate step by the World Bank, which the people of Uganda see as very uh, hypocritical and unacceptable. We will continue engaging the World Bank as uh, we normally engage them, that was Okello Oyem, Uganda's Minister for Foreign Affairs. He spoke with Kenneth Odongo of the Swahili Language Service. Leaders of the Economic Community of West African States ECOWAS will meet tomorrow Thursday in Abuja, Nigeria, as a follow-up to their ultimatum for the military junta in Niger to reinstate ousted President Mohamed Bazoum. Meanwhile, the military junta announced late Wednesday that it has formed a transitional government. Here is viewers French to Africa reporter Abdul Razak with the rest of today's developments in Niamey. Yes, good morning, uh, James. Uh, so the new government team is made up of uh, 21 members, including uh, six soldiers. It has also four women. The Department uh, of Defense is uh, entrusted to the former chief of uh, general staff of the armed forces, General Salifu Modi. The public security will be managed uh, by the General Tumba Mohamed. The current permanent representative of Niger to the United Nations, Bakari Aou Sangare, is uh, the new head of uh, diplomacy, while the one who was until now the spokesperson for the Ganta, Colonel Major Abdraman Amadou, is assigned the portfolio of youth and sports. Higher education and uh, research is uh, entrusted to Professor uh, Seydou Mahamadou, the current director of the University of Niamey. The economy and finance portfolio will be managed by Ali Mahaman Laminzen, currently with his duties as a uh, transitional prime minister. So the formation of uh, this government comes a few hours before the second extraordinary equal summit on the political crisis here in Niger. The sanctions accompanied by a threat of military intervention to restore constitutional order taken at the end of the first summit did not move the lines of a way out to the crisis. The attempt at negotiation initiated by the community body were also inconclusive. Viewers French to Africa reporter Abdul Razak was speaking with us from the Niger capital, Niamey. Niger's deposed president is running out of food and under increasingly dire condi conditions two weeks after he was ousted in a military coup and put under house arrest, according to media reports and the U.S. State Department expressed deep concern about the deteriorating conditions of his detention. President Mohamed Bazoum, the West African nation's democratically elected leader, has been held at the presidential palace in Niamey with his wife and son since mutinous soldiers moved against him on July 26. For more on the situation in Niger, viewers Douglas Mpuga reached Sati Fashak, a professor of history and international studies at the University of Jos, Nigeria. As an individual, I feel disturbed about the coup in Niger. My disturbance is because we thought that uh, in this 21st century, democracy should be advancing on the continent rather than being reversed. So we see a situation where we're going back to the 1970s and 80s, the decade uh, that Basil Davidson calls the AK-47 decade, meaning the return of the military. So it's, it's quite disturbing, and it's more disturbing given the fact that some other countries in the West African sub-region have also been involved in uh, military takeovers, including uh, Burkina Faso, including Mali, and these are all former French colonies. On the one hand, there are people who believe that 
This is a new wave of nationalism, rejecting French neocolonialism. Unfortunately, personally, I don't feel um, uh, enthralled by uh, what the cookies are saying, that um, they don't want uh, French control because the French depend on their uranium. ECOWAS is trying to resolve the issue in uh, Niger, and uh, Nigeria mm-hmm. is a b- major player in this. What do you think are the chances that uh, the coup could be reversed uh, following uh, ECOWAS uh, pressure? Well, I don't know what will happen because ECOWAS was unable to reverse the coup in Mali. It was unable to reverse one in Burkina Faso. So I don't know if ECOWAS will be successful this time because the coupies have formed a belt, including Sudan, that is in crisis. These are contiguous countries. So maybe with their alliance with Russia, it will make things, in my opinion, more difficult for ECOWAS intervention unless it is a diplomatic uh, maneuver. I don't see military option working. For example, the Nigerian parliament rejected the military option. So if Nigeria is not deploying troops, I don't see which African country has the resources to do so. But meanwhile, in Nigeria, uh, it has its own crisis. Gas prices way out of the way. <laughs> Many people have packed their cars. There is no decent alternative transportation. Things are very expensive. Many families are going hungry. So Nigeria is not in a financial position, except if it takes a loan to intervene in Niger. A senior United Nations official for Africa called Wednesday for a negotiated solution to the conflict in Sudan, saying there is no alternative. Calls by some to continue the war in order to achieve a military victory will only contribute to destroying the country. UN Assistant Secretary General for Africa, Martha Pope, told the UN Security Council, the longer this war continues, the greater the risk of fragmentation and foreign interference and erosion of sovereignty and the loss of Sudanese future, particularly its youth. Bob expressed a particular concern about the ethnic nature of fighting in the Darfur region, especially West Darfur, which has seen brutal ethnically based violence. Uh, this is deeply worrying and could quickly engulf the country in a prolonged ethnic conflict with regional spillover. She warned. Darfur saw wide-scale ethnic violence and crimes against humanity in the early 2000s. The International Criminal Court opened an investigation into the situation in 2005 and charged then-Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir with genocide. He remains beyond the court's custody despite having been removed from power in military coup in April 2019. Pope said Khartoum State remains the epicenter of the current conflict conflict with fighting concentrated around key Sudanese armed forces installations, including its headquarters. Other areas of concern include the Kodofan and Blue Nile states.